Okay, this is tutorial number two on a multicam edit in Magix Edit Pro 2013 Plus. I have synchronized the audio video tracks and now I'm ready to trim it and do a multicam edit. I've left track one and two open as you need to do for a multicam edit and you'll see why. And I've got three tracks, a right, a left camera and a center camera. As you can see, each camera started at a different point. Even though they're synchronized, you see each one is a different length. That's because the cameras were all started at separate and at different times, and they end at different times too. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of clean up the tracks and just kind of even it out here at the end, and then I'll pull everything to the left. So to do that, let's see where I want to start the video in general. Now keep in mind, in Magix Edit Pro, the bottom track is the track if you have nothing soloed or nothing uh, muted or uh, any, of the, um, any of the tracks, you'll, um, you will see the bottom track first in the frame up above. So as you can see, that center camera, that center fixed camera, you see the camera doesn't move anywhere. That's the track that we're, we're seeing right now, the bottom track. If I were to mute that track, I would see the second camera up, which is the left camera. And as you can see, it's shooting from the left side. And if I were to mute that one, then you would see the right camera shot. So now I'm seeing the right camera, it's the only one not muted, and if I unmute that and unmute that, I'm going to go back to the center camera. So let's just use the bottom center camera for now, and we'll judge where we're going to start from. This uh, production starts the first opening sequence, is um, the birds coming up onto the stage here. So I know I'm going to start back in here someplace. Let's start in the dark someplace. and. Uh, and we'll just pick that point for now with the audio. You can listen to the audio and see where it sounds right. Just a bunch of crowd noise right now. Okay, but there's the uh, intro. So I'm going to use my cursor keys, my left, right cursor keys, and my uh, arrow down cursor key is a, uh, the left is a rewind, so I can go, I can move back in steps slowly, and I can use control or shift to accelerate, and I can go to the to the right and use control or shift to accelerate also and I can when I, I can click play using that using the up arrow key and I can click the down arrow key which is pause okay so I'm gonna go back a little bit the other thing to do of course is you can always drag this if you want to move a little faster along the tracks you can just drag this too but when I'm making fine movements I'm gonna use those cursor keys they're very handy so let's go back to where it's a little dark here. Make sure there's no sound except the crowd noise. Right there. Oops, got to go back a little bit. I started to hear some music. So I'm going to go back just a little bit here. And I'm going to choose this line. I'm going to leave that line there. And I'm going to drag. I'm going to trim everything back to that point. So I'm just going to drag that left edge. And I'm going to drag the left edge here. And I'm going to drag the left edge here. Now that was safe, I didn't move anything, but what I probably should have done is to lock those tracks together, create a group. That way I, cannot, I won't get out of synchronization. Let's just verify that synchronization. Let's go to something where they're singing. I've got all audio tracks on. Yeah, I don't hear any echoes or second voices, so I think we haven't messed up anything. But what it should do first is click on each of the tracks, hit control, left click, control, left click, control, left click. I've got all three tracks selected now, and I should link those together. So I'm gonna group those together, and now if I move those tracks, they'll all move together. So now I'm gonna move the top one to the left, and the others move with it. Move those all the way to the left, and now we've got them all pushed up to the left, and they're gonna stay synchronized because I've got them grouped together. I can always ungroup them individually later if I wanna make some adjustments. Now I'll probably want to clean the end of the tracks. They kind of end at different points. That's not real crucial at this point, um, but you could clean it up by finding the very end of the video. This of course is just the beginning. It's not the total end of anything. There's a sequence right there. Let's just see what we've got. So it's the end of an act right there. And so I'm going to use the point of this right here to trim it back to. I'm going to trim this one back to that point and trim this one back to that point. That just cleans up all my edges and I'm ready to go. Now I can click this to optimize the top.
timeline view so I can see all the video all on one screen and I'm all cleaned up and ready to go. Okay, I'm ready to go into multi-cam mode. So let's uh, click up here where it shows the two cameras and that's going to enter us into multi-cam mode. Now these screens up here, I'm on a black screen so you're not going to see anything yet. But if I drag my cursor across, you'll see this. Uh, let's click multi-cam. And now we've got tracks three and four. You see the colors change. It's very difficult to see the light purplish color here and the uh, orange. But it also outlines this track with the orange and outlines this track here with that light purplish color. So that you know active the active tracks are three and four right now. You could also go to the very end of this timeline and we could go off the screen, uh, just keep going to the right, and you could see the colors and the empty spaces. So if you had any empty space, it's very easy to see that which tracks are active at that time. Okay, so you can only have two tracks in Magic's Edit Pro 2013 Plus, the non-pro version. You can only have two tracks in a multi-cam mode at a time. You can come back though later on and then edit in that third track. We just all we have to do is select that as an active track then. Because if you right click on this, you will see multi-cam source track. And you will see uh, this one, multi-cam source track. But if you go to five, multi-cam source track is not selected. So we could select that as a source track and replace one of the others. Okay, the first thing you'll notice is we have not assigned a master audio track to any of these. So I just happen, you can listen to the audio on each one by clicking the mute and uh, listening to each one individually uh, by solo. Um, I just happen to know that I like the audio that was filmed with my camera, the right camera. So I'm going to select that as my multi-cam master audio track. So it's going to continue. It's going to use no matter which video you select. It's going to use that as the audio track for the uh, for the production. Okay, I'm ready to select my tracks. So as you can see, as I've showed you, I'm just going to drag this across just to show you one more time uh, in multi-cam. We will. We should have uh, three tracks showing up above, or two tracks showing up above. Uh, for some reason, it's not showing that right now. So I'm going to click multicam again and put it back, and now we've got it. For some reason, it, it's a little glitchy, and sometimes it doesn't show it when it needs to. So uh, it, I've had the same problem with sound periodically, and I've had to unclick, click, and unclick the mute buttons. And I have to do sometimes the same with the multicam. Sometimes it doesn't turn it on and off the sound or the video properly. So just clicking it and unclicking it usually resolves that issue. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going to use uh, track number one as my starting track because um, I know that's probably the best. And as we go, now it's yellowed up here because I've selected it with a left click because I know that's the track, that's the right camera. And I'm going to start with that. And as you can see, it fills in this whole track with camera one and it, the sound from the master audio track, whichever one we select as a master audio track, fills out track number two. So as I start to play, I can just click, left click the selected the track, the video track that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and start that and I'm just going to let it play along. And right now I'm just going to let it keep going from track number two up here. But if I wanted to switch over to track number two, I could switch at any point. Like right now, let's say I wanted to do track number two. Right now, see it change color around the border. Now I've selected track number two and the screen, the preview on the right also changes track number two. I'm gonna go back to track number one. And you can go through the entire movie selecting the track you want and as you can see in the editor bar in track number one it's changing which track you're selecting right there it's placing that in so i'm going to let that go a little bit more i'm not going to bore you too much with this okay track number one i want to switch to track number two Screen went black on me there for a second. I'm going to use now, I can click stop. And I click stop and I'm going to hold it there for a second. I'm on, still highlighted on track number one. 
Now what I do a lot of the times is I don't exactly know when I'm playing it back. Sometimes I click it too late and it doesn't, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's not where I wanted to cut. So sometimes I will go through it with my cursor keys, my left and my right, and I'll move, see right now I'm moving it forward, and I'm saying, okay, as soon as this person gets to the center of the boat, maybe I want to switch to camera number two. So I will, I can go backwards, I can go forwards. And as soon as I get to a point that this is where I want to now switch, so let's say I want to switch right there to camera two, now I can click camera two. And you can see it makes the edit right down there. And now I can go forward again. And I can use my sh control to go a little faster. Or I can just continue to use the cursor keys to go really slow, just to pick, go back and forth until I exactly get what I want. Yeah, let's see, the camera number one seems to be zooming in a little bit better, so at this point I'm going to switch to camera one, and I left-click camera one. Anyways, you get the idea. Just continue along, you can play, and you can just change track camera two, get the close-up. So anyways, you get the idea. It's now creating the master track up here with the video and the audio. And that's using just cameras three and four, track three and four cameras, which is the right and the left. So now let's say I wanted to intersperse some of, maybe I've done this all the way through with just using two cameras the entire time. And then I say, okay, now I want to get some full stage shots. How am I going to add those? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect one of the cameras. So let's take, for instance, let's just move my cursor over a little bit further. And let's say I want to uh, go to this part of the where there's a big production number. Let's find something here. It's a big production number. There's one. And let's say I wanted to use the, the full center camera at this point. So let's take camera number four, track four, off. So I'm going to tur tur turn off the source track there. Now I've only got one up above and I'm going to go to the center camera and I'm going to turn the source track on down there. So now I've got the other camera to use. Now I can choose that. I can play it. And I can switch to now that camera if I want. And as you can see, it's going to intersperse that track. Okay. You can see it making the changes right here on the track in the timeline. Anyways, I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing, but that's how you switch between tracks and you change your active tracks. That's it for this part of the tutorial. Uh, next chapter, I'll show you how to do some chapter mark ads.